everybody. How are you guys doing? Welcome back to Crimes and Punishment, Sherlock Holmes. And we are going to be heading into case number six. That's right, six cases down so far. Uh, about uh, 17 hours or so of content. Holy shit. Um, and then, of course, cracking open a surge. Gotta have a surge. You know, I got two cans left. Two cans left of my, my precious, precious shirt. Surge, it's a fully loaded citrus soda with carbos. Yeah, I've been really impressed with this uh, game so far. It's been a lot of fun. It was, like I said, an impulse buy uh, just on the uh, on the store one day. Thought it sounded like fun. Wanted to try an, an, a more kind of traditional point-and-click adventure kind of game. And holy crap, turned out to be... Uh, a good buy. I, I definitely recommend. There are there are a few things, of course, but no, highly recommend. Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? <laughs> I can't understand your interest in them, Holmes. They're dirty. They wouldn't hesitate to steal your wallet. They... Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouth-watering. <sighs> All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street, it's invite you, spelled, right. Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rat head salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Mm -hmm. Ray, continue. Mm -hmm. Main course, sow's udder in Danny Nutcracker's way. Oh, sounds disgusting, Holmes. Okay, there's a challenge for you, Gordon Hedgehog Ramsay. Goulash. Make that, but make it delicious. Sweet turnips in homemade juice. And it goes on. Homemade ah, juice? I can hear them on the stairs now. Well, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. He loves he frozen well, rat head. Man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. No. Mr. Holmes, it's my brother, Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. Damn it. You I have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. He didn't Where is he do now? it? From what I've heard... They took him to the yard, and they gave him a good beating already. You know what they're like. They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. Well, and forget if anything about to get dinner. out of this dinner. <laughs> Wiggins, I'll take the case. You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. Well, please go clean You'll be your there, face. right? It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. All right, let's go to Half Moon Street. Man, I was looking forward to that dinner, you guys. It sounded amazing. I mean, what? Turnip in, in, in homemade juice? Now, once again, they hop into their carts, and they drive around in a circle, because London is very, very small. I swear, I think this game would break if Watson, like, cracked a smile. If you just, just, just a little bit. This is a pro. I wish I could black uh, black out these uh, these windows here because there's a very tiny glare on my TV. And whenever I play games that are um, really dark, uh, not dark like evil or anything like that, but dark as in you know, uh, it's not very uh, bright outside or anything of that in the game, makes it just a tad bit hard to see. So bear with me. Uh, please, gentlemen, leave the scene now. Oh, Mr. Holmes, is that you? Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Constable... Good evening! Constable Marrow. I was here with Inspector Abiline during the Ripper case, Mr. Holmes, back in 88. But then this is nothing like that case. It's the second time with they've alluded one, to the Ripper case. the murderer, case. the weapon, and the statements... I wonder if that's going to come back at all. Themselves. Of course, Marrow. But you know that appearances can sometimes be deceiving. No. Tell me about these victims. Who were the victims? The two men here, both shot. The stab fellow was Brian Facotti, oh! a well-known ruffian. The other, Kenneth Butler, 
a jeweler by trade. And these oh, you spoke of statements. You have witnesses? Well, I was there, so I gave my own statement. Oh, thank God for that. And then there were two other witnesses who said they saw the killer Chapman. Charlie Mr. Chapman? Turner, a gentleman who lives in that flat over there. And Polly oh, Powell, a, quick. a flower seller, who was over at the uh, far side of the street. What's going on with the camera? All right. And testimony. So, Constable Marrow, I should be delighted to hear your testimony. I was standing at the north side of Half Moon Street. That was the side that you came from. But you would have been unable to observe this part of the street, where we are standing now. No. That is correct. But I saw the two victims slowly enter Half Moon Street, and then shortly after, the fireworks started. A few minutes after fireworks. that, the fellow Chapman rushed towards me and ran into Half Moon Street. Mm, please continue. I didn't pay attention, but... Suddenly, I heard a woman's cries and police whistles on the other side of Half Moon Street. How many times can you say Half Moon Street? And I saw the two dead bodies on the ground. When I reached Whitechapel Street, I saw Leighton Chapman. He'd been caught by two police constables. Wow, okay. Shots. Did you hear Everybody. the shots? I didn't hear any shots. The fireworks were all over the sky. They were so loud, I couldn't hear anything else. Oh, so real fireworks. I thought when they were saying fireworks, like, yeah, that's when it went down, the fireworks, you know, people shooting. Don't mind well, me. What were the fireworks in honor of, uh, Constable? Well, uh, today's Queen Victoria's birthday. Oh, but, uh, of course. Of uh, course. Yes, I appear Long to have lost queen. track of the days. It is May now, of course. And can I get the details on Half Moon, please? The Constable Marrow. What else caught your attention while you were running through Half Moon Street? I saw nothing but rats, and I took the time to light every corner with my lamp. Why did you... okay. Did you happen to look up at Mr. Turner's window when you were on Half Moon Street at that time? Heard yes, again. I saw that the window was open, but no one was there. It was dark in the room. Okay. Constable, your statements have been of great value to me. Oh. All right, so now we go into the click porn fest that is Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Watson, I'm do you have any ideas? I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Okay. <laughs> he definitely looked like he died in pain, like... <laughs> Brian Vercotti suffered greatly. What a okay, terrible I probably way shouldn't be to laughing, die. But it just, it does... Uh, dead... It, Leaving a, a face dead in a video game is just so hard to nail at times. Uh, and, you know, if you leave it as you think it'd be, it can sometimes look a tad bit comical. A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vercotti must have done some time there. Can I pick it up? Pick it up, pick it up. Piece of wood? Okay. A piece of wood that has stuck between the cobblestones. Let us take a closer look. No. Okay, that is... Yep. That's wood. Where, what am I supposed to... Okay, there we hmm. go. This shard of wood is quite new. Be a little awkward if that piece of wood was just from something unrelated. Ooh. The bullet head struck shot. his head. This man didn't stand a chance. Yeah, a headshot typically is a hard one to walk away from. This is an ordinary key. I wonder what kind of door it opens. Were keys back then, like, still, you know, shaped like that, or was it more modern like we have today? Because I wonder what makes it um, unique. Because if all keys were like that back then, then, yeah, it wouldn't really be very unique. What's up, door lurker? Looking all creepy. Good evening, Mr. Turner. Good evening. Oh, I, I heard Constable Marrow reply to you as Mr. Holmes. Are you that detective, gentlemen? I feel one of the same. You. And well, I know things. Things about this evening. Excellent. Might There's stars in the sky. <gasps> Let's give him the once over. I like to look over uh, people before I actually start asking them questions. 
Okay, the second one is something about war, it looks like, even though the words are kind of blurred out. Let's... Ah, give him the once-over. Come on, do 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 Anything around... Oh! That'd be the war. Bam! War veteran. Um, limping. Something about limping down there? Oh! Ah! And, uh... I missed one up here. Where, 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 where? It's like a little tiny spot, isn't it? Come on. When I get to this point, I feel like I'm just molesting the poor man. Let me touch you all over. Limpy, no, that's that's the other arm. Oh, oh, oh. Missing buttons. Okay, poor life. You're missing a button? Does it make you poor? Uh, I don't know. I've missed a few buttons, and I don't feel like I'm living in squalors or something. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Uh, I was already in bed. When the fireworks started, a few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Oh. Please continue. I quickly got up and I grabbed the lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Well, near this body. <laughs> oh, thank you. That, that, you. that really clears I don't it up. I think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Alright, so Whitechapel Street. That's where we need to go. Anyone else? Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? No, I saw no one but that man. The murderer. The fellow they caught. What about the police officer? No, didn't see him at all? Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, there was a very short pause between them. And, and, and they sounded different somehow. Huh. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. Different that gun. is an interesting comment. So, possibility of a different gun Mr. and Turner, two suspects, maybe? Mr. Turner, what were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return. So I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out and tell them everything I saw. You have helped us a great huh. deal, Mr. Turner. Now look, okay, so that when you see that little yellow, I like to call it a starfish, because that's what it kind of looks like. Um, so different shots, two victims. Okay, so those two don't line up, and that doesn't dark way. Okay, so that doesn't, different shots does not line up with anything. Uh, dark window. Oh okay, yeah, there we go. So we already got one little clue here. Conflicting statements. Mr. Turner stated that he remained at the window of his flat until the police arrived. However, this is in conflict with Morrow's statement that the constable did not see anyone at the window. Hmm. Who's telling the truth? Too early to tell right now. There was two... If we go by him, there was two different sounding shots. That means possibly two people, two guns. Could the policeman be in on it? Can my voice get any higher? Find this and more. Uh, actually, before I do that, uh, did any of those other clues link up? No. Okay. I just wanted to check. So, got that. Wiggins! Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he alright? Okay, we're going to have to go to Scotland Yard to talk to your brother. Is there anything... Wait. Let me go. Sherlock Holmes vision. Is there anything that a normal man wouldn't see? Okay, no. no. Anything? Yeah, that's right. Polly Powell? Hello, Mrs. Polly. Mrs. Powell? What do you want? Uh, my oh, well, name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony, but very well. See, I mean, I've said this before, this is the only problem I have with this game, is there's not really any kind of, like, extreme uh, facial animations. So, I mean, look, the way that she was modeled is very neutral, and so it's kind of hard to tell if she's been upset, if she's happy, 
That's the Could only thing. If there was ever going to be a nitpicky thing, seen, that's the only thing I have heard. a problem with this game sometimes. Yes. That, yes. You know. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began in honor of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost and all covered in blood. Huh. It was dark, but I could see him because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then Ooh. another constable came out from the very same street, and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Two constables came from the very same street. I wonder, does that mean that already, here's another hypothesis, uh, or a theory, excuse me. Um, does that mean that maybe the young man isn't guilty of any of this, and the two police, there was like two policemen that shot him? It's another possibility. Mrs. Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not gunshots. sure. You know, what with the fireworks? Okay. Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. Yeah, that's true. My thanks to you, Mrs. Powell. So, I, I feel like she's telling the truth. Uh, the old gentleman down there may or may not be. I don't know. It's, it's too early to tell as of yet. Uh, now, oh, oh. Hmm. This mirror is turned towards Half Moon Street. Let me go down here real quick. I mean, he points out that mirror. At least from this angle. I mean, there's no possible way you could look down at that mirror and see really anything. However, does that mean the shopkeeper down there, she could have actually seen more? I don't know. Let's... Is there more to actually ask him now that we talk to her? Ah, cool. All right. Yeah, bud. What's up with that? Mr. Turner. You have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. Uh, and that would be... Contradiction? That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, well, <laughs> Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. Do you understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. <laughs> Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me. Mr. Turner appears to live very modestly. I wonder how that limp will uh, come into play. Before I go looking at the window, let's snoop around, shall we? Which I know he won't mind, right? This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. Okay, we got a kitchen, kitchen knife. kitchen knife is quite sharp. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. This kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. There definitely sometimes, like, he notices, it's like, how does this fit into the case? Like, sweepings also. Is, I've never heard anyone call, like, little shredded bits sweepings. Uh, should I talk to him Anything again? Anything else you'd oh. like to know, Mr. Holmes? Not right now. That's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. It's a pretty good view. Also, though, I'm, I'm seeing that... And, like, I know that's Watson right there, but I wouldn't be able to make him out from this point of view. So if we're supposed to go off of that, then he wouldn't be able to recognize uh, who it could be. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. So we to be believed he had a... Uh is really, really good vision or something. Because at least from there, I, I wouldn't be able to tell who those people are. 
It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. All right. And that's it we're going to get from the police officer, at least for now. I have a feeling we'll find out more. Uh, let's go to Scotland Yard. And... Let's go talk to the kid's brother. If I believe the old man, if he's to be believed, and there was two distinctly different gunshots, then that means... Well, two things. Either there's two different people, two different guns, or one person with two guns, but then why would that be mentionable? I don't know. I don't know. Loading. Mr. Holmes. There we go. Whatever brings you here so late at night? I'm interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. Case? What else? He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, sure, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession, which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find say, anything though? else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. Thank you, Lestrade. He says it with, like, such disdain. You moron. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sherlock. Let's look down of a possibly loaded gun. Oh, I'm glad I was looking down that gun. Two out of the six shells have been fired. Interesting. There were two shots. Maybe you guys might know. Can... Can a gun, when it gets fired, two same bullets sound differently? Like, maybe one's packed tighter with uh, gunpowder than the other? Uh, will one sound differently than the other? Looks like uh, we can link... Link those two together. Oh, okay, we already have a... Uh, Okay, so Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots, as in fact, three shots were made. At first, a single shot was fired, and then two guns fired simultaneously directly afterwards. But it didn't look like the bodies had... There was one shot it looked like in the bo one body, and one shot in the other body. Uh, Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots as they were made from different points. Okay, I did not... I did not think about that. I mean, either way, though... That would mean two people, right? As they were made from different points in Half Moon Street. Hmm. God, it is too early to call this one. What do you guys think? Any any ideas? Any suggestions? At first, a single shot was fired, and then two guns fired simultaneously directly afterwards. Um. Can I talk to the constable. It would be my to... pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. All right, how do I? I want to become Spider-Man. How does Sherlock Holmes become Spider-Man? Finally.